Let's talk for a while on how switches distribute load across the physical links in an ether channel. For our example, we're going to assume that there are four physical links. The way this works is a bit complicated, and it can depend on the model of switch you're using too. But it essentially comes down to a process called hashing. Hashing is used for a lot of things in the IT world. We'll see it again when we talk about security later in the series. A hashing algorithm takes any input and generates a fixed value as an output. The output that it generates is a bit like a signature, and that signature represents the original data. You can think of it a bit like you're in a library. Books are organized according to category and are given a number. This number represents the book. Using this number, you can find the book. Let's take a very oversimplified example. We'll pick a number, let's say nine. This is our original data. Now for our hashing algorithm. Our algorithm will be to take the original number and divide it by four. The result of this is two with one left over. We could say that the one left over is our hash value. We could take any number we wanted, apply our algorithm, and get a hash value as a result. So although real hashing algorithms are far more complicated than what I've just explained, basically there's an input value, and there's an algorithm, and there's a hash value that we have as a result. So what's this got to do with ether channels? Think about a frame that needs to be forwarded across the ether channel. The switch will look at the frame's details. This might include things like source and destination MAC address, IP addresses and port numbers. It will take these values and run them through a hashing algorithm and generate a hash value. To keep it simple for our example, let's imagine that a hash value will always be 1, 2, 3 or 4. The switch will assign certain hash values to particular physical links in the ether channel. So a frame with a hash value of 1 may be sent on the physical link 1. A frame with hash value of 2 may be sent on link 2, and so on. The real hash values may be a bit more complicated, but I'm hoping you get the general idea. At this point though, I'd like to clear something up. The hashing algorithm is not LACP. It has nothing to do with LACP. LACP does not decide how traffic is spread across these links. The hashing algorithm process is independent and will run regardless of whether we're using LACP, PAGP, or manual ether channels. Going back a step, I said that we might use values like source and destination MAC, IPs, ports, and so on. The values we use are configurable, and the options you have available vary a little depending on your switch model. To see what we're currently using, we can run show ether channel load balance. You can see here that we're currently using source and destination IPs as the input to our hashing algorithm. We're not considering MAC addresses or port numbers. Can we change it? Absolutely. It's done with the port channel load balance command. Here you can see all the methods supported on this switch. Bigger switches will have more options. Let's change it to use source and destination MAC addresses. So is there any reason we would want to change the load balancing method? To be honest, in a lot of cases, no. We can leave it happily at the default setting. However, there are occasions where we will want to. Let's take a look at this simple example. In a case like this, traffic forwarded to these servers will go to the router first. When a PC sends a message, what will the destination MAC address be? It won't be the server's MAC, but it'll be the router's MAC. This is because the source and destination MACs are rewritten at each layer 3 hop. What this means is that when the switch sees the frames coming from the PCs, they will all have the destination MAC of the router. Now what would happen if our hashing algorithm looked only at the destination MAC address? As it's the same value for every frame, each frame would get the same hash value. The result is that all traffic would be assigned to one physical link we could say that the traffic is pinned to this link. So if this was happening, we would change our load balancing method to include more information. Maybe source MAC or source IP address. What we really want is a lot of variety, which helps to spread the traffic across the physical links in the ether channel. The key point to take away from this is that there is no guarantee that traffic will be evenly spread across these links. We might be expecting 4 gig of bandwidth, but we might find that we're getting a bit less. 
We'll cover this a bit more in the lab if you're interested in taking a look. And here are the final three quiz questions. I think you'll enjoy thinking these ones through. To put all this in practice, we have this scenario. We want to use ether channels in our customer's network. Someone has even started configuring them for us. However, they don't know how to get them to work. You need to find out why they're not working and fix them. The next video is the last in the layer two and switching section of this series. Head over to the next video to learn about power over ethernet.